We are in Kanab, Utah. We were supposed to be backpacking this morning through Buckskin Gulch, but we are currently waiting in town so that we have service because we are supposed to be receiving closing documents for our house that need to be signed before we go off into no service. I already picked up the permit at the visitor center and dropped a car off at Lee's Ferry last night. So we will see how this is gonna turn out. Worst case scenario is we don't get to do this trip, but we have a really cool house. So right now we're just hanging out at a developed park and yep, that's how this trip's going so far. We have received the documents that we need to sign and so Carson is going to read through them and sign them and we will be headed on our way which means that we are going to start backpacking today and we're going to have a long 14 miles but at least we get to go on this trip and we also are going to have a house. This is cool. This is awesome. So glad we came back here. Yeah, I know. So we cannot avoid it any longer. Here we go. <laughs> Canyon soup. I have no idea how deep this is. So I don't know how many miles we've gone. I haven't bothered tracking us because there's no way the GPS is going to work in this canyon. Um, I'm thinking we've gone about five or six miles-ish. Could be totally off. Uh, I just wanted to mention this ladder right here. Uh, so if you do Buckskin Gulch from Wire Pass Trailhead, there is a drop-off that is about eight or 10 feet or something like that. Um, and apparently there's usually a ladder there, but we had to scramble down without it, which it is doable. Um, it's just a little uncomfortable. We've got a long way to go still. It's really cool in here. I don't think I've been in anything like it. The walls are really tall. <laughs> I expected miles to be slow and they are pretty slow, so it's all good. Um, I feel like we're probably averaging about two miles per hour for the whole thing and that's because 
going through the water is really slow because you cannot see the bottom of the puddle and how deep it gets. Um, and if you're gonna break your ankle on a rock, so it's really slow going through it. It's basically like walking through chocolate milk. <laughs> We're gonna keep going and hopefully we get to camp before it gets dark, but I don't know. Yeah. In certain sections. sun to come back. <laughs> so we ended up going through water up to chest deep and then continuous waist deep pools. It was really dark and the sun is not high in the sky anymore so we got pretty cold. All filming stopped for a while. Um, I have two R1s. It's a really good thing that we brought these even though it's been, it was almost like 90 degrees today um, or else we would have been in a lot of trouble so we kind of ended up in this more open area um, hopefully it doesn't get narrow again in waist deep pools because we're gonna be hiking for a while still we might be about four miles away from where we can camp if nobody else is already camped there um, so it might get dark on us and <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna make it work. We're going like one mile an hour at this point, so it's slow going when you're walking through waist deep pools of mud that you can't see the bottom of. <sighs> All right, let's go. So slightly warmer. We are in the tent, about ready to go to bed. I'll tell you guys about it in the morning. It's a little late right now and my feet hurt. We got into camp about 9 p.m. last night. It was definitely after dark. We set up the tent in the dark, had dinner in the dark. These bugs. I did expect them to be long miles. I prepared myself for that. And we actually kind of ended up finding a place to camp at the time we thought we would, uh, but they were definitely long miles. We, at one point, were chest deep in pools of water. My backpack was floating behind me, and then we kept going through many pools that were waist deep. Even though the air above was almost 90 degrees yesterday, it was a lot cooler down inside the canyon very dark. We were definitely beginning to have mild hypothermia issues, or at least I was. Um, luckily we have everything we need in case that happened, but I started to get a little worried. But once we kind of decided to stop and 
try to warm ourselves up and get our bodies out of water, it actually, the canyon opened up and the air got a lot warmer and we ended up having to go through a couple more or a few more waist deep pools, but it wasn't as consistent. So it got, it actually got hot again. And then it started to get dark and we had to climb down some moky steps and that wasn't too bad but i'm glad we didn't have to do it in the pitch black it was probably around sunset there was also a rope there which apparently a lot of times that is not there i'm really happy it was yeah and then we found camp i have blisters on both of my feet which is something that hasn't happened to me in years <laughs> I think it happened. I mean, my water shoes suck so bad. You guys should see them. It's, I have no excuse as to why I haven't bought new ones. Um, but the sand was, the sand in the mud was building up under my feet and it was just rubbing. And I think that's what caused those blisters. So I have those all duct taped up and hopefully today is going to be an okay day. <laughs> it's going to be much easier hiking. Um, but we still have some mileage to cover. Nothing crazy, but after yesterday, we're a little bit in pain. The GPS said we went 15 and a half miles. Not sure if that's accurate or not, um, but it's approximate. It seems approximately right. So, good luck to us today. <laughs> We've got like how many more miles to go? 30 miles to go. Yep. Day two, here we go. I hear something. <laughs> Sounds like wind, but I think it might be water. Guess we'll see. It's the Priya, guys! Here it is. Wow, look at that, more chocolate milk. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't know how to start. Um, this is really embarrassing. And I feel pretty bad about it. <laughs> I feel really bad about it. <clears throat> so I've never forgotten to bring anything while backpacking before. I mean, I think when a couple of times I forgot a fly a rain fly and it turned out okay. <laughs> Our trip has kind of come to an end prematurely. We had just gotten to the confluence of the Priya and we're walking along <laughs> and we realize that we do not have the keys for the shuttle car. <laughs> um, the keys for the car that we are walking towards are in the car that we left at the last trailhead. <laughs> oh my God, I feel so dumb. So we've sat here and talked about it and I really wanted to finish and continue on I do have service at Lee's Ferry, so I wanted to potentially call for a shuttle or maybe hitchhike with other people. But because the chances, we don't know what the chances are, 
there's so few people in this canyon because of the permit and most of them are probably not ending up at Lee's Ferry and the ones that are even if we caught up to them do they have a shuttle car at Wire Pass so we can hitchhike? I don't know. Um, I'm not going to assume that any of the shuttle services are going to be immediately available for us. So it feels like the right option to walk back up Buckskin Gulch, <laughs> which really sucks because going up is going to be a little bit harder and I'm in pain. <laughs> I was so excited because I'm like, oh wow, the hike along the Perea, it's going to be just a walk, you know? I mean, there's some water, you know, my body hurts, but it's okay. It's going to be easy. But um, we're going to have to climb up some boulders. We are going to have to be walking through up to chest deep canyon soup, slopping through mud and walking past dead mice and dead goats and um also there was a rattlesnake <laughs> that um Carson almost stepped on so there's rattlesnakes as well that's look great the good news is buckskin gulch is beautiful <laughs> and we get to do it again <laughs> we get to see it with a new perspective because we'll be walking the opposite way <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it's gonna be a fucking long day. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't cuss. It's going to be a long day. I'm trying to mentally prepare, but I'm mostly just embarrassed about the situation. <sighs> this is an adventure that we will never forget. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we are back into buckskin already and I wasn't lying when I said that we're gonna get whole new views of buckskin going back up because like look at this oh also we didn't see this at all because we did this in the dark last night so there's that too so we get to see that part let's go <laughs> This is why I have blisters. I mean, I actually feel pretty good because when we did that yesterday, it was in the complete shade and we didn't have sun for hours. And now we have sun and I'm glad we got it over with and that was the hardest part. So we're good. I feel pretty good. Despite the day, <laughs> despite the trip we're having, I feel good. It's good. Maybe I'm just perked up because it's freezing cold. <laughs> All right.
All right, guys, we are back to Wire Pass. We are heading up. Those <laughs> were some of the hardest miles, I think, that I've ever hiked. Canyon miles are not the same as regular miles, it seems. Uh, we are in a lot of pain, but we got to do Buxton twice, so there's that. Um, we're excited for dinner and margaritas. <laughs> Some important things to know about this hike. You do need a permit. I got mine in advance. I don't remember how long in advance. And they do go pretty quickly, so keep that in mind if this is something you want to do. Another thing is this is the longest slot canyon in the world, and you should never enter a slot canyon if there's rain in the forecast for the area or for the areas around it. When you pick up your permit from the ranger station, they do provide you with wag bags. You do have to pack out human waste. Another really important thing I want to mention is that no matter how hot it is, hypothermia is a real concern in this canyon. For a while, at least on this trip for us, there were continuous pools that were waist deep and up to chest deep, and we were getting no sun because of how tall the canyon walls are and the air inside of there is really cold. Um, so be prepared for all kinds of conditions and to get wet. Also, there are rattlesnakes, so watch out for those. Watch where you step and watch where you put your hands. Sorry. Okay. I'm like dying I'm trying to hold that position. 